28 Days Later? Really? They're referencing a horror movie about zombies. And they did a pretty good job of it. Kids are going to be scared. This is going to be marvelous. Oh wait, parents. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Season 6, Episode 15, 28 Pranks Later. We probably should have actually counted the number of pranks in this episode to see if they got to 28. Ah, would have been an interesting thing to check. Well, as I said before, they're referencing a zombie movie, and this episode did get extremely dark. It's like the darkest My Little Pony episode yet, really, if you think about it. Well, this and their Nightmare Night one, because five of the main six were scared out of their wits because Fluttershy was scare pranking them because that was what they said they wanted. So I really consider this one the darkest because they implied that thanks to Rainbow Dash's ego, she hurt her friends in like the worst way possible. So Rainbow Dash's attitude finally caught up with her in the worst way and not just as some people have been doing comparing this to um, Meriduel. Yeah, this was much more of putting Rainbow in her place than the mysterious Meriduel because they just upstaged her in the mysterious Mary do well but this time they really scared and hurt her because nobody wants to be the person who's responsible for harming their friends also no one wants to be responsible for starting a zombie apocalypse mm -hmm. well at least they're after cookies and not brains yeah so that begs the question why did you take the rest of the cookies with you? If all they want is the cookies and there's a limited supply because you only ordered so many, I can understand destroying them, getting rid of them, or throwing them in the opposite direction of the direction you're going to throw off the zombie horde, but taking them with you? Bad idea. Yeah, now that you bring that up, I didn't even think about them tossing away or leaving the wagon behind or just having one of them go off and lead a trail of cookies off in a completely different direction, specifically Rainbow Dash, and then coming back. Yeah, or just setting them all on fire or destroying them in some other way so that nobody else can be contaminated. Because you have come to the conclusion that the cookies cause people to become cookie zombies. That means you need to get rid of them. Unless you're going to keep like one box to see if you can like magically reverse engineer them to undo it. They did do a good job of playing through all the zombie tropes. The walking up on someone who was bending over something and tapping on their shoulder and suddenly ZOMBIE! <laughs> and the slow walking and the um... Friend, are you okay? Hi. Uh oh, not good. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I've never seen the movie 28 Days Later. I just know enough about it because of all the stuff that went on around it and, you know, pop culture stuff in general. Yeah, I don't do scary, so I only caught the reference to the name because I recognized the movie title. I actually went and looked it up on IMBD to get the full synopsis because I'm, I'm kind of fluttershy in that regard. I don't do scary. Yeah. I think the only zombie movie me and you really enjoy is Warm Bodies. Well, it was basically a modernized Romeo and Juliet, so yeah. Except with zombies. <laughs> well, I think it was a much better Romeo and Juliet adaptation than that gang war one that came out a few years prior. Ah, well, there's another zombie movie I actually like now that I think about it. Shaun of the Dead. That was a funny one. I think most people like the comedic ones. Let's see. Oh yeah. During the prank sequence, one of my favorite pranks is the one with Spike. <laughs> I had to send the litter away, it came back. Send the litter away, it came back. Send the litter away. I knew we were going to cut to Celestia going, What the heck? Well, that was actually a callback to Season 1, Episode 5, Griffin Brush Off. Because when Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash pranked Spike before, they gave him the hiccups and he kept accidentally flaming all the scrolls that he was trying to pick up and sending them to Celestia. And we cut over to Celestia getting all those scrolls. I thought I gotta say, that prank is the one I laughed the hardest at. <laughs> There's only like two or three moments where I actually laughed during this episode. All the other times I was like, 
mm, I see where they're going, but I also see how dark this is going, and if the kids weren't paying attention, it's going to scare them. Oh, Disney movies always worked on the theory that you needed one scare-the-heck-out-of-you scene in the movie. So, this is probably going to take up the rest of the podcast, but shall we go over all the nitpicks? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's start with the fact that Rainbow Dash already knows better than to prank Fluttershy. Mm -hmm. I mean, she even states in this episode, too easy. Yeah, which is what I say when something isn't worth my effort, because so little effort to get the results that it's like insulting to even try. Not to mention back, once again, season one, episode five, Griffin Brushoff, I'm going to go there a lot. <laughs> Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie were all set to prank someone by the lake until it was Fluttershy. It was Pinkie Pie who originally said, no, we can't possibly prank Fluttershy. She's so sensitive that even our most harmless prank would hurt her feelings. And Rainbow Dash is like, yeah, you're right. Good point. So if she knew that way back in season one, why is she being such a brat now and pranking Fluttershy in the dark, in the forest? And we also have pretty much all of the pranks, except for the ones that are played against Gilda, going over reasonably well. Everybody gets a little giggle out of it. So why were those pranks okay and these pranks not? Because Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash repainted the apples on Sweet Apple Acres. Messing with the apples is pretty serious. And once one fell in the barrel and the paint washed off, we had the reflection of Applejack laughing. We have Rainbow Dash laughing when Pinkie Pie gets her with the old telescope, you know, eye ring gag. We have Twilight laughing over the, I don't remember what prank was pulled on her, but I remember that she was laughing. I don't remember Rarity laughing when they leave the flowers at her doorstep and she sniffs them and gets sneezing powder on her muzzle. And Spike enjoyed, you know, said it was a good one. Oh yeah, Pinkie Pie, you know, you're always getting me, good job. When he starts hiccuping and he breathes fire, they're both genuinely concerned. Like, are you okay? Did we go too far? Oh, no, it's okay, dragons are fireproof. And the scrolls start going up. Too bad scrolls aren't. So, they understand that pranking can go too far, because right there they were concerned that they actually harmed him. So all of this has been covered already. Though I gotta say that the new prank on Rarity in the current episode where, ah, I see what you did here. It's gonna be something with this cake. Walk away. I'll just start working on this. Dang it. <laughs> the old bait and switch. You think I'm gonna do this, mm -hmm. but I actually got you with this. And Rainbow Dash should enter in cake contests unless she got Pinkie Pie to do that cake. Because <laughs> it must have been really convincing for her to walk over and start using it before it starts falling apart. Well, fondant adds a very nice solid layer to work with. Also, she wasn't expecting anything to be wrong with the sewing machine. Also annoying because now she has to get cake stains out of that fresh bolt of cloth. And I'm trying to remember the other moments I laughed at, but I can't really... I guess that's why... I'm kind of like, yeah, this episode was okay. <laughs> There's only a couple of spots I really enjoyed. The rest of it was pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> if I actually used a numbering system, it would be either a 5 or a 6 out of 10. Because <laughs> I could see where it was going, but I could also see where little kids would be enjoying it because they wouldn't realize at first about, oh, the whole zombie things were fake until later, though some of them would because, you know, there's some smart kids out there. <laughs> Because I just could imagine looking at this as a little kid and being scared out of my wits and worried about the characters I know and love that suddenly, but this whole thing was fake. <laughs> I, I don't think a lot of kids watching this would actually get the reference to 28 Days Later. One would hope not. So are there more nitpicks? Have you ever known me not to have more than just a couple? <laughs> Sometimes I'm not quite sure if we've gone over all of them. So let's look at these Philly Scout cookies. There are more female ponies the same age as the CMC in Ponyville, so are they the only three members? You can't have, I'm, I know the Cutie Mark Crusaders little club is only three members, four with Babs, but you can't have a whole Girl Scout troop of just three members. 
So there had to be more ponies of that age group selling for it to be a valid thing. And of course, if this is something that's been going on for a while, because usually when you're in Girl Scouts, you're in Girl Scouts for a few years. So this isn't like, oh, the first year they've joined. I don't ever remember seeing any Girl Scout style ponies in the previous seasons. I vaguely remember some kind of reference to Girl Scouts and a background pony somewhere along the way, but yeah, nothing prominent. Mm -hmm. And okay, if Rarity was putting the finishing touches on the uniforms, uniforms like that are normally standard issue, so that doesn't seem right. Also, Applejack not helping Apple Bloom when she said she would. So we have honest Applejack breaking a promise because she's worried about Rainbow Dash's prank. Oh yeah, that scene. Yeah, I was questioning this. I was like, so you're not doing this because you're afraid of Rainbow Dash? Couldn't you have like done it then gone to bed? Because I'm pretty sure you would have been completely okay since you were worried about her pranking you when you were asleep. Yeah, and you promised to help your sister. Don't you think you should help your sister? Also, how the heck did Rainbow Dash lift that entire bed by herself and not wake Applejack? Apparently Applejack is a very sound sleeper, and I didn't really think they were going to have moved the bed outside. When she woke up and rolled over, I figured there would be something in the bed with her, you know, a la Godfather. Mm-hmm. You know, because I was like, oh, pig! And then cut to being outside, I'm like, okay... <laughs> Yeah, so not only is she going to have to wash all that bedding and get the mud stains out, uh, there is mud clinging to the supports of the bed that's going to have to be cleaned as well. Ah, also I just, I think I just figured it out. She didn't move the entire bed, she just moved Applejack into a similar bed. Still, apparently Applejack is a heavy sleeper. Yeah, I was going to say, but that would be the simplest solution. Instead of moving the entire bed, you just move Applejack into a bed that's made almost exactly the same. That's already outside, because that's something Rainbow Dash could feasibly do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Please continue. And going out of order, the fact that Fluttershy stood up for herself by calling a team meeting to go get her under control, because this was not appropriate. Mm. For a second there, I thought the episode was going to be interrupted by a table tree map thing. <laughs> no, I didn't really think so. I mean, when they open with the pranking, I'm like, we're probably pretty much going to stay with the pranking. They do try to space out the Table Tree Castle Map episodes more, and I know it feels like a long time since we've had one, but that's because the last one was pre-hiatus, because Spice Up Your Life was a Table Tree Castle Map episode. So we probably are about due for one. Or maybe they're saving it for the last couple of episodes of the season. Mm-hmm. But that was kind of a combination of pure pressure and organization pressure, because since they were meeting in the castle, at their official, you know, workstations as a basically superhero group. That would be like a Justice League meeting going, dude, Batman, you need to knock it off. I told you not to invite the Joker to our Halloween party. You know what always goes wrong. <laughs> yeah, it was a pony version of an intervention. <laughs> mm-hmm. Except that, you know, not everyone was on the same side, considering that Pinkie Pie was also... A prankster and up until the point that she thought Rainbow Dash went too far she Pinkie Pie was on Rainbow Dash's side. In both instances of an intervention and just plain old peer pressure your social group is going to try to force you to do something everyone else is supposed to be on the same page. But it vanished to Fluttershy for standing up to Rainbow Dash and also taking it to the next level and going okay it's not enough for me to say this I'm going to let our friends know that you did something that really bothered me because I need some additional input. Where that could have been, I'm going to report you to the Table Tree Castle Map group and we'll see what happens then. It shows character growth. Yay, Fluttershy is actually staying less Fluttershy. <laughs> you know, because characters are supposed to change. Yeah, but Rainbow Dash can't stop being Rainbow Dash. Mm-hmm. Well, at least we haven't gotten too many episodes where it's all about Applejack and it's all about her being stubborn. <laughs> um, what was last week's episode? Yeah, but that's not a focused episode on Applejack. That was more of a CMC episode than it was anything that was specifically on Applejack. Yes, but it was Applejack's only contribution was, I am stubborn. So, uh, 
think we got everything. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought the episode was okay. It was enjoyable at some parts. It was a solid middle average episode for MLP. We've gone over these things before, but I think they did a pretty good job of handling them, even though it's redoing of character development for Rainbow Dash. And I can't wait for next week's episode. Though, something brought up into my mind when we were talking about the Tree Castle map. I think it would be funny if one of the things on the map is actually sending a group of them to where the changelings are staying. <laughs> if one of the castle map journeys is, go, help the changelings. And they're all like, what? Uh, no? <laughs> I'm thinking as they don't realize it's helping the changelings, they go, they just go, that's an odd spot on the map. And then when they get there, they go, oh, shoot. Well, of course they don't know where the changelings are. I'm basically saying that's the reaction once they get there. Like, no, we're not helping the changelings. Okay, where are the poor people that the changelings are subjugating? What do you mean there's only changelings here? Dang it, the Table Tree Castle map is broken again. <laughs> actually, that would be a good excuse. <laughs> but then they realize, shoot, we actually have to help the changelings. <laughs> well, this is all very off topic, but... There shouldn't be any reason that changelings and ponies can't get along. Ponies love a lot, changelings feed on love. You know, the whole Canterlot wedding thing presented them more as terrorists. It's like, uh, yeah, they're scaring people. Fear is kind of the opposite of love. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're all kind of not getting the nourishment, eh? Oh, but back on topic, what were your final thoughts on the episode? <laughs> It was a good episode, and if we hadn't had Griffin brush off, I probably would have liked it more. But since we're covering topics that we've already covered, I'm getting that kind of Pokemon Ash Ketchum feeling of the show is repetitive because it can be. Because, you know, we're six seasons in. The children who started watching the show when it first came out may or may not still be watching the show, but they're are new children who are now the right age who probably haven't seen the previous seasons yet. So, recycling! I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 6, Episode 15, 28 Pranks Later. Thanks for listening. If you want to be notified of new episodes, please subscribe. If you enjoy Lux's art, you can find more on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Really like Lux's art? You can go to my Patreon or check the link for commission availability.